Hey guys, welcome back to the edit place and I just wanted to say a quick thank you to all the love and support that I've gotten for the first couple days of starting up this channel. If you're just finding it from totally out of the blue, then welcome. This is a brand new channel that I just started kind of piggybacking off of my other main channel, which you can find by either searching initial focus or Michael Tobin. But yeah, huge thanks to all of you who have subscribed, commented, liked, and engaged in these videos. And I'm excited to get into today's because we're talking about how I set up my A roll and B roll and basically projects for uh, most YouTube videos, simple ones like this. We're not gonna do any advanced stuff with like crazy VFX and um, all that stuff. This is basically how I line up the A roll, the audio, and then a simple line of B roll. In this case, it's going to be the screen recording that I use for this video. Now, jumping on the computer, uh, I'm always kind of changing my organizational workflow to find what is the best. And for this channel, I kind of started something a little bit different that I'm curious to try. Basically, at the very top here, you can see under the project here is February 3rd through February 7th. So since I'm going for all week, I'm basically trying to uh, fit everything in one project file just in case I wanna like take an asset from another. I can just grab it real quick. And I don't know, sometimes when you get so many projects going, it just gets a little bit crazy, uh, especially when you do multiple times a week. And so I figure this was fine. So you can see here, I have the three different timelines for the three past videos that I've done for this week. And then as you know, as I'm editing this video, I'll just add a fourth one here. And you can see on my bins up here um, that I have all of these organized. So yeah, so these are the timelines for my previous three videos. You can see that they all look incredibly similar. Got a bunch of audio tracks, one main video track, and then we have the B-roll or the screen capture uh, track here and a couple basic titles. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new timeline. This is just gonna be a test one. I'm basically gonna pull my assets from another video and we'll call it a day. So basically if we look up in this bin here, um, you can see that I have my A-roll right here. I record an all one continuous loop. I don't know who is a single person who doesn't do that, it's the easiest. Definitely, I don't recommend starting and stopping every time like you mess up. You can have a ton of clips, it's just a mess. It's so much easier just to cut through um, a roll this way. So I have everything in there. This is just one giant uh, long clip. And then also up there, we have um, the screen capture. This is pretty much the same length um, because I start them at the same exact time. Now for audio, I was recording separately. Um, but now I have this mic going directly into the mini XLR on my Blackmagic Pocket 6K. And then for the computer, I actually have my Zoom H4n uh, acting as a computer mic. So that way it makes it really easy to sync up because if you don't use a microphone to record like scratch audio for your screen capture, then you have to find some other way to sync it to know when you're on your screen. It's a little helpful when you're recording on your camera, the screen, because you can always match it up that way. That's still a major pain, but that has been a saving grace in the past. I'm going to pull my A track into here. So this is that long B roll. I'm going to pull this right on top of it. And I use Capto that actually does two different um, audio recordings, which is really nice. It captures the computer's audio. So if something's actually playing from here, maybe I'm doing playback or YouTube video or something like that, it captures the YouTube audio on the bottom here. And then it's capturing from the H4 um, behind there. So that's what I want to pay attention to. I'm not really using any computer audio and this is scratch. So I can make it bigger if I want. And what I'm going to do is select everything move it out a little bit so I have some room to work with. Zoom in and quite simply, you can see all the different waveforms here. And I'm just going to line these up, basically make sure that I'm hearing both echoes. And then all I do is bring that audio all the way down. Yeah, so I just move the bottom track uh, to be all the way silent. I used to delete the tracks, but then sometimes you make a cut and you don't mean to and you have to realign and then you have to go find the audio and it's pain in the butt. You can also just like mute the layer, but again, it's just easier for me to just 
make sure it's muted there and that way I don't accidentally uncheck this box and then export it out with a bunch of random audio sounds. So now that I've got all the clips lined up here, uh, right before I start cutting, I'm going to hide this top layer so I can see the bottom one. I'm going to scale this up since I have it set for the computer screen, which is 4096 by 2160 true Cine 4K. So I wanna make sure I get my entire screen capture window in here. So I'm filling in on mine here downscaling from 6k and then just to keep it easy for color grade uh, I go in here and this it and then I apply a grade that I've saved earlier in the week and you can see handful of nodes here don't remember exactly which LUT this is just so you guys uh, this is blue love that's right this is a again kind of a, a custom setup that's without the LUT under uh, fresh LUTs here I believe if I go to Browse, Blackmagic Film 4K. Yeah, so it's this guy. By the way, these are totally free to download. If you want to copy that, I know someone commented on another video asking about this color grade. So I apply the LUT to the entire A-roll here. Now, depending on your playback, you may need to temporarily turn that off so you get smooth playback. Uh, but most of the time it plays back just fine for me. I'm not sure about the screen capture. Now that I've done that, what I wanna do is I wanna select everything again right click on it and you'll see this link clips option so i'm going to select that and then now if i click anywhere it's all treating this as one clip the reason i do that is so that way um, when i'm cutting i don't have to select them all each time because if you forget to select a layer and then you trim one and not the other and then move it your audio is now all out of sync and that's a nightmare as well and then I move over to my secondary keyboard here with all my good old shortcuts. And I just start trimming here. So I leave a couple seconds. And so I trim everything down to front, move this to the timeline. I always apply a little fade here. So that way it fades in, boom. Oh, one more thing to turn on, which I wish if anyone knows a way to keep this on by default, I cannot figure it out. Uh, timeline at the top here, there's a selection follows playhead. Helps out so much. So what this means is wherever your playhead is, which is this red vertical line, it's going to select the clip below that. So see how it changes the clip. The reason that is helpful is if we turn it off, and so we can see this clip selected, so I can do things with it, I can trim it, whatever. As soon as I go to this next clip, if I try to trim right here, it's not gonna do anything because it's still selected on this other clip here. So I wanna go selection falls, playhead. Now I'm all set up. So now I just start trimming over here, cut that. Here's a big gap here, boom. And so I just keep going throughout I'm not going to recut this again because I just made this video yesterday and I don't care to recut it. I usually go through it once or twice. The first time is kind of just getting the major chunks out and then I really go in, zoom in and kind of refine these lines to make sure that they're quick. Um, you know, because people don't like even waiting a second in between lines. And then the fun part, if you have B-roll, this is where you start to layer it on top, or if you're doing stuff like I am, where you're just going back and forth between, say, like a crap, a capture on a computer screen, I'm going to turn on the top layer again here. And what I now need to do is basically unlink everything. And so you're only going to do this when you have your A-roll locked. So again, when you know that you're not gonna mess with moving clips around too much. Because for example, if I want to take away this B-roll on top here, I need to delete it. But since everything's selected, it would delete everything below it. So I need to select everything, link clips again, because I created cuts over here. And then right click, create links, or deselect the create links. And so now everything is individual. Uh, now I'm just going to go ahead and boom, cause I want to be on me. And then we'll cut to the computer screen and then maybe back to me. And so just like the A-roll, I rinse and repeat all the way down. 
Um, and then again, before, this is where I would start going through and either keyframing or just simply moving this around. So say we're talking about the nodes right there, just zoom in and you can see why I came up with the accessibility thing because doing this, just scrolling into wherever my cursor is, is way faster than doing this. And yeah, and then I can go in and I add music here. So let's say I was using this track and anyone who is a big music person is probably gonna hate me on this part. Um, but I basically just drag and drop in music here. If I know that it's a very repetitive beat, like I know this one is, um, a lot of times I will just literally copy things over, have it rinse and repeat. If it's a song that has a very awkward, abrupt ending, um, I may need to put it lower, fade one out, fade one in. Uh, but I know that this song repeats just fine. And then what I do is go to Fairlight, which is where all the audio stuff is. You can do stuff on the edit page, but this is just a lot easier. And then I simply look at my mixer over here. I can see that my music is on A5 and my main audio is on A1. Um, so first thing I can do is just look at the balance. Uh, so A5 obviously is going to be louder. Usually bring it down between like negative 30, negative 27, somewhere around there. So that's probably pretty good. I'm going to bring this one up a little bit. And then I simply add, add a dialogue processor to mine here and mail VO. And that's just going to bring up the higher tones, going to change going to help with a little bit of de-essing um, and just add a little bit more excitement to it. And sometimes if it's really flat, I even go in here, brighten up those, brighten up that. Again, I'm not an audio aficionado, definitely have to learn more. So now that sound is pretty much mixed together. Then I head over to my delivery page when I am all done. Zoom out, make sure that my entire timeline selected, name it whatever I want. Save it where I want to save it. Make sure audio and video is syncing. Uh, H.264 file, like I said, full Cine 4K. Don't really touch much else. And a render queue and boom, hit start render. And that is basically it. That is how I put together a super basic, uh, well, that's how I put together these videos and the same techniques apply to doing a normal YouTube video. The only difference being um, obviously it's going to go way more in depth if I'm doing something like a review on something because I'm going to have a ton of B-roll shots and be adding that in, different color grades, maybe different locations. If you want to see a really in-depth video on the entire process, um, at some point I'm thinking about doing a live stream where I literally just like go live and for like three or four hours just edit away and we just kind of just chill and you can see that whole process if you want. Um, but for now, hopefully this was a nice little introduction to how I do it. And I would love to hear how it compares to your guys's. As I said before, thanks for visiting the edit place and I hope to see you guys soon. Uh, yeah, hopefully this keeps growing. And uh, if you haven't already, don't forget to click that subscribe button. Greatly appreciate it. And also let me know down in the comments that you're new here. Uh, I'd love to give you a welcome and I'll see you guys tomorrow in the next video.